Hi everyone, welcome to The Knitting Den. This is episode number 173, I think. And today is Thursday, October 23rd. My name's Denise. I'm also known as Knitting Den on Ravelry and Instagram. If you're watching for the first time, thanks for joining us. I do appreciate you checking out the podcast. I hope you like it and come back and sit with us again on a regular basis, hopefully. Um, to everyone else that is coming back, welcome back, guys. I feel like it's been forever since I sat down with you. And I think it's only been two weeks, but I think a lot has gone on. I think a lot. <laughs> I have no notes whatsoever except a couple of titles down here so I don't forget to say things. But, oh, I did not want to put off another day sitting down and chatting with you. So, apologies if this gets to be all over the place, but I just wanted to sit down like as if you were coming to visit and they'd... I'd put the kettle on because I just feel like I haven't seen you at all. Sorry, Boo, you want to get up? Go on. Um, no, I just had to stop and start because he barked. No barking, please. Um, here go. And here comes the other one. I can hear her. Do you see the tree? I don't know if you can see it well enough from there. It is pretty red. Um, it definitely has turned to fall since I got back from my trip. My trip to Florida, by the way, if you're wondering. So let me go in, well not order, but I've written down. First of all, what's in my mug? And this is a new mug, and it's from the Lego shop in downtown Disney. Because during fall break here, for those that don't know, um, which was just last week, I think. Oh, it seems so, so long ago. I took a trip, uh, got on a plane and flew to Tampa, Florida to visit my best pal, Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. And she is Sock Bunny from the Knit and Fit, Sock Bunny Knit and Fit podcast. You might have seen me on her podcast last week. I didn't, I've been so busy, I didn't even get a chance to mention it in our Ravelry thread, um, Ravelry group, the Knitting Den group. But if you haven't seen it, I am sitting with Kimberly during her whole podcast last week. Um, we did make it a shorter one than usual, but it was super fun. Um, so that's where I, I took a trip there. We had a nice few days. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But I got my mug from there, and I'm not... I think it's just so cute. I'm not a great... Not great. I'm not a big Lego fan. And when I say I'm not a fan, I mean I, mean I like them. I've just never collected them, haven't played with them in years, and came this close to getting a little box to um, put together, but I, I couldn't really choose. Missy, yes, look, I'm busy talking to everyone. Mm-hmm, pawing at me. Um, so I was looking, these mugs, hmm, that's the first sip I've had. I am having in my mug, no, that might be back to front, I'm not sure. Uh, cranberry and raspberry. And these mugs are the ones that had your name on the top. And it's on this side, so I'm looking at it. Because I am right-handed, but I'm going to turn it round in a second. There was not a lot of selection for names. If I'd have seen my name, I wouldn't have bothered getting this mug. I didn't really need it. And as I said, I'm not, you know, all into Lego, so I would have just... I would not have bothered at all. But my name wasn't there. And so I was looking at other names. Um, we couldn't see Kimberly. We couldn't see Kristen. We couldn't see any kind of common names, for want of a better word. But I saw this name, and it made me stop and stare. I've never seen this name on mugs or pens and things, you know, like the personalised stuff you get in the stores. But this name is very special to me, and I'm going to wipe off the lipstick, but it's almost like I just gave him a kiss. This name is Edgar. And for those who know me well, you'll know that that's my dad's name. It was my dad's name. So I had to get it. I just had to get it. Never, ever seen a name, his name on a mug like that. So... 
this is a very dear mug to me and every time I I'm glad it's like on this way because I get to see it when I drink I'm not letting you out Bindi it's pouring a rain out there so that was uh, actually I was going to show you that in show and tell but of course I had to tell you now it's what I'm drinking in my mug so moving on uh, trip to Florida fabulous I, was, I left on Sunday, actually at midnight, caught the red eye as they call it, because that flight was over $150 cheaper than going a few hours later um, or going in the afternoon the next day. Bindi, no, you can't go out. It's pouring down a rain, sweetie. So it did mean I arrived in Tampa at about 5.30 in the morning and I wanted to say a huge, huge big thank you again to Kimberly because she insisted on coming to pick me up. I said I would be happy to wait around, you know, till a more decent time of maybe 7 o'clock, but she was there. Um, and we stayed, I stayed at Kimberly's on the Monday. We just had a nice... Um, Relaxing day. I think we popped out to Target and then at six o'clock or so that evening we went and met Dale, one of our friends, Kimberly's friends and one of my friends now. She's a knitter. She's girl Dale on Ravelry and she's been to the Soft Bunny retreats with us. So she wanted to get together and have some a quick dinner because she just finished work, I think. So we went to Panera Bread and um, I got to chat and we sat there for an hour or so. On Tuesday morning, Kimberly and I set off and went to Universal Studios. Yep, it's about two hours drive from Kimberly, and I said if I'm going to be that close, I would really, really like to go see the Harry Potter um, things there. I find out that Harry Potter is in two places now. Greedy, greedy, greedy people. You can't just buy a ticket, which is like $100, for a theme park to Universal. Well, you can but you'll only see half of what they've done for for Harry Potter that I think it's universal that has the Diagon Alley you know like this uh, and there's a ride there and the shops and everything and then to see the other place the castle with the big dragon on the top you have to go to Islands of Adventure and it's actually a different theme park so I was no way I was going to pay two you know for two parks but chatting to Dale on the Monday night, she had just been with her husband. And of course, she reminded us that if you get a, um, a two park pass, not just not two days, we only had the one day to do this, two park pass, you, you would get a pretty good discount. So it was more like 150, 147, 150. And I decided to splurge because I just, you know, I don't know when the next chance I'll... I don't know if I'll get there next year. I was hoping to take Kristen, but that's another story because she's not liking the idea of flying there. But um, I decided to splurge, and we actually did. And Kimberly was busy, not busy. Kimberly was going to buy a season pass anyway. So, uh, you know, it made sense to, I, I'm assuming that included both Kimberly. Because she's now, she's now, yeah, I think it's for the two parks. Um, so that was well worth her doing. She only has to go one more time, I think. And she would get her money's worth. But I did it. It was worth doing. And I've just flicked my thing in the... I don't want to be drinking that every time I sip. But I don't want it dripping down the outside. So, I mean, I'm not going to dwell on... or oh, give you all the information about Harry Potter. Suffice to say, really, really fun. Um, and in fitness, if I remember, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how we managed to eat clean and pretty well while we were there, believe it or not. It's possible in a theme park. Um, should you want to make that decision, because, you know, some people I have many times in the past said, I'm on vacation, I'm going to eat whatever I like. But it was, uh, it was just really good. Um, weather was fabulous. I mean, it was 85 degrees the, every day I was there. And there was some humidity, which I'm not used to, because I, I live in Colorado. But it was just, oh, I'm just so glad I made the effort to go. I made, you know, and in the past I would have said I feel guilty. I mean, not just go <clears throat> popping on a plane to see a friend, but to actually 
drive and go to the Disney, not Disney, but the, the theme parks, the universal ones. Um, and I did experience Disney because we then went down to downtown Disney the next year, which is, you know, we had a good uh, bit of shopping. And if I remember, I might have inserted some pictures at the beginning and you would have seen me with some uh, toys for Kristen and it was just fabulous. And I got myself a pretty necklace, but I haven't got it on right now. So you might have seen that in the pictures, like coral and pearls. It was really pretty. It was kind of my birthday treat, I think. Well, one of the many. But it was just fabulous and it went too quick. I came home on the Thursday. So we had two days down in uh, Orlando, came back on the Wednesday and um, stayed at Kimberley's that night and then she took me to the airport at lunchtime. I loved it and I will do it again sometime. Um, yeah, so let's move on. Um, birthday, just quickly. Thank you to those who sent me some birthday wishes. It was really nice of you. And I know there was a um, couple of messages in the Ravelry group to say a happy birthday. So thank you, girls. And to those who sent me patterns, I do not have my iPad here, but I've sent thank yous. And I think I'll, I'll try to remember to show the patterns um, next week. Um, one is a beautiful cowl, and I really fancy putting that on the needles soon. And the other... Um, is the even star shawl <gasps> and now that makes me wonder whether i should still make that my legacy we'll get into that in another show all right moving on hardly any knitting but i do have a finished object i'm not going to call it a true finished object yet even though it's totally off the needles and totally finished it's not blocked and it was off the needles was it? I think it was just yesterday in the car and I thought I would get it blocked last night and it'd be dry but I didn't even get a chance to, to get it blocked but it is done ah, just perfect timing because the you know the cooler weather's here in fall it's just beautiful out there I have finished ta -da, my hanging leaf shawl from the Botanical Knits 2 book and it needs a good blocking, as you can see, because all of the leaves need to be, I don't know why I've still got the doohickey there, uh, they need to be pinned out. I can't wait to get this blocked, and I'm going to block it quite a lot, because I want it to, I don't mind if it thins out a bit and, and it gets a little bit bigger. I mean, I haven't tried it on, I don't even know which way I'd wear it, but if it does get bigger, well, I think the girl in the photo just kind of, has it round her so it needs a good blocking to stretch out so that I can you know throw it around it seems bigger on the picture I think the blocking will do that and I don't know I don't think I would wear it like that no it doesn't seem right although I might want to just to get something around my neck but it's finished but it's not so you'll see it again next week because I absolutely have to get it blocked and uh, then show it off and model it and take some pictures. Um, now that that's off the needles, I do need to cast on the huge Waldo sweater that I talked about. I haven't um, brought it over, I haven't brought the yarn over or anything. I've done a swatch, I mentioned that the other week, and I just couldn't get it on the needles until I got this off. Um, I just couldn't concentrate on it but now I will put that on the needles and it is a simple I'm going to do a top down raglan I do need to take the yarn back that is cream there's no way I can knit this sweater it's supposed to be red and white so I'll have more news about that next week and um, yes I know I always, I'm always looking at my hair oh and do you like my earrings look at my pretty earrings they just came in the mail this morning um, from my sister as part of my birthday and there was a ne necklace but I haven't put that on either um, so thank you because if you're watching this some of you do now my family do watch this um, in England thank you Nana um, before I forget do you notice the the screen seems like it's got more in it like a wide screen I am using my new phone the Samsung Galaxy Note 
5, I think that's the full title. We went and finally got some new phones on Sunday, last Sunday, which was my birthday. And my twin brothers, hello Ken, if he'll not be watching, but happy birthday! Um, we went and got new phones, I decided on the iPhone 6S, or 6S Plus, or whatever it's called, the biggest one they have. Um, and Kristen decided to get the Note, and this is what I wanted. I did want this Note. And then I decided I'm going to get the iPhone, just because. Never had one. And I, I love the idea that it has FaceTime on there, and I would be able to FaceTime my sister when I'm out of the house, because I FaceTime her a lot, and it's usually on that, you know, my iPad and her iPad. But if she's at, um, like when she was at her daughter's wedding last year, her... Her other daughter had uh, has an iPhone and they have FaceTime on there. And they would actually try to FaceTime me um, from, they, they FaceTime me from the wedding so I could see them live kind of thing. Um, and it's so, it would just be good to be able to FaceTime her when I'm out and about. But, unfortunately, that's not going to happen because I was so disappointed in the camera. And that was the whole thing reason I wanted a new phone I didn't care my Samsung Galaxy 3 did not seem like it was old it functioned great although we could tell the battery was starting to drain you know really quick but I wanted a great camera and Kristen got this one and we came home and she was looking at hers and I was looking at mine and we were trying the selfies and everything and it was no different to what the Samsung was like it, there was hardly any space around um, and there was just lots of other things. I didn't even think it was as clear a picture, although they say it with the pixels or whatever, it, it is a really good quality camera on there. And many of you have it, and I think you love it. But to me, sitting, I just wasn't happy. And I was really sad to see it that I was going to change and not have the phone. Yes, Bindi. So I did. I went down on Monday morning. Back down to the mall, went into the Apple store, gave my iPhone back, went back up to T-Mobile or Mobile, where we had got the plan for the phones, and um, I got the Samsung Note as well, and I absolutely love it, love it. Even comes with a little stylus pen, pulls out the bottom, and you can write notes. And there's so much on there. I'm not even finished going and looking at everything. I do. I, the camera blows me away. Um, you can do, I think you could do a few of these things on the iPhone, but it's just so much easier for me to use because I've had a Samsung for years. You can do panoramic, you can do a wider selfie, so you get, you know, this area in. You can um, do slow motion videos, you can do fast motion video, and it's just, I mean, it's amazing. I love it. So, hmm, this is getting a little bit. Um, cool now so I'll put that down so that's what you can see <clears throat> lots and lots of space either side um, and the lighting looks really good I think at least me looking at the camera uh, very overcast and rainy out there but it looks really bright on the on screen so I'm happy with that um, okay so a little bit more knitting where did I put it oh now that I've got that off the needles, I'm going, and I let's not talk about the shrug for a while. Um, it's time to get that sorted out and finished before the holidays, should I choose to. But now that I have that off the needles, I thought I would revamp or resurrect a couple of whips. Um, one is my crochet blanket I thought if I get it out and it's near me I'll start to add that oh my gosh I didn't realize I'd done so much but I think I want to get back into this this is um just a ripple blanket I started weeks months 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 ago oh it looks so pretty so I'm going to pick that up even if it's just a you know for half an hour in the evenings I just haven't had much time to knit at all but things that are easy to pick up, you know, there's no reason why I can't. And I'm using um, just some acrylic yarn. It's this Red Heart Soft in the colours, the green, the blue and the white. I pulled that out, 
have it close by and I will be able to, you know, do a few rows or chains or whatever. The other thing I've decided, I'll go between the Waldo sweater once it's on the needles. I've got to resurrect this bag of shame. Because if I put my mind to it, I could have this finished by Christmas Eve. And you know what, what work in progress it is now, if you've been watching for a while, because this is a stall. I don't know if I've got the full name because I just have the, I don't know if I've got the full name of the pattern because I've just got the, uh, what do you call it, chart in my book here, my chart thing, with the magnets, you know, to keep it all. I do not, and it's not in here. So I'll get the name later, but this has been on the needles nearly two years, guys. It's not even anywhere near halfway, I don't think. But if I pick this up in between knitting the Waldo sweater, which is just stocking stitch, top down, easy raglan, I'm going to set a goal and say this has got to be off the needles by Christmas Eve. It arrived in the mail Christmas Eve two years ago from a friend in England. It's a total surprise. It was like one of the best Christmas Eves I've ever had. Um, and this is the yarn. There was two skeins of this Lioness Art Silky Sock in the colour Moonlight. It's a very, that's quite true to colour. It, I don't know, Moonlight to me, it's, I would think of a darker colour. This is just a nice soft grey. Beautiful. And um, I assume it's got two skeins. This is going to take me to halfway. And then I'll start on that other skein. And I'm determined now to get as much done as I can. And the goal being Christmas Eve. So again, for the next few weeks, it's going to be not much to show you on the needles. Not much different because I think I'm going to try and concentrate on those two projects. Pr project, the, the yarn, uh, the sweater and this shawl. And then in between... I can quickly pick up the crochet and see if I can just make a little progress on that as well. Other than that, um, this is car knitting. I've and I did show it. I didn't bring it. I did show it on Kimberly's podcast. I had a whore, which she says there's not. It does not even exist. So apparently, I have a PhD uh, project half done. But I had a whore, which was with sock, and it was in the Barocco. Uh, sock, comfort sock, I think it is. So I finished one sock, just it's a top down, easy vanilla sock, and then I did the Hermione's Everyday Heel. So this is car knitting, really, and I have another sock on the needles, which I've never got very far with. Um, this is this could be car knitting as well. I'm using zeros um, for this, I've never used zeros. Normally, it's a size one for my socks. But the yarn, it seemed like it was thinner, but I guess it's just like any other. This is Patton's Croy, and I love the colours in it. And I actually got this in the the bin last year, or this year, back in February, <coughs> um, that Kimberly brought to the retreat. There was, um, you know, like leftovers or odds and ends of balls, and this was... This, wasn't, this was a brand new ball, so I was going to try and squeeze a little pair of uh, ankle socks out. Um, so I've got a little cuff, and I've actually started on the heel flap. In hindsight, um, which I won't pull this out, but I would have liked to just... I like those um, Rose City Roller socks, the tiny little anklet socks. I've, I think I want to do a few of them um, when I start on socks for the car. I'm going to think about doing them, but that's, you know, that's going to take forever. I'm not in a hurry. All right, let's talk about Pinktober. I hope this is recording okay. I've never done this on here before. Pinktober, guys, I'm so sorry I've just not been, I feel out of the loop with it because I've not recorded much and, I mean, you know, the threads are there in the Ravelry group. We've got a chatter thread and we've got the finished object thread. This is going till the end of October and wow, we're, we're, we've only got like one week left of that, I think. 
oh, a week and a half now. But I just wanted to show the prizes again that I have with me, and there is other prizes, and I need to get them listed for you guys. So first off, there is going to be one of these um, in the pink, which I thought was perfect. It's the the bag that I did in I did it in blue, and there's a. I think that's the fabric that I'm going to do the handle with for you. Um, I did them in blue for the Brit Lovers Kit. This is um, a giveaway. This is going to be one of the prizes from me. I also was gifted, or not gifted, sent as a donation um, yarn to give away. So I'm going to, I think I said, I'm going to give these two away and then these two away. So that's one prize, two prizes. This is Baby Alpaca Grand. It's oh, super soft. and I, Again, very true to colour, this camera. So that looks really good. Even the purple might be a tad darker than you're seeing, but that's pretty pretty good for purple. Always looks completely different, I think, on screen. And then we have the Magic Yarn. And, uh, and I do not know where this came from. I, I haven't asked who donated it yet. I haven't asked her where she got it. I haven't had a chance to Google it. You keep Some of you keep asking, where did I get it? And I don't know. But, I mean, we would just have to look at um, online and search for Abracadabra Yarn by Hiku, Haiku. And if you didn't see the last time I showed this, and it's not going to work today, I don't think. When you're in the sunlight, because there is no sun, when you're in the sunlight, this yarn turns pink. Seriously, pink, pink. Um, I think it was the last show I showed the, this. So if you haven't seen it and you want to go see this yarn changing colour, then go see it. And I think there is one, two, three, four skeins. And there is, uh, let me, oh, where's my glasses? There they are. Let me see how much, 100 yards. So you've got 400 yards. Um, I don't know what, whether you can do a little tank with that or you could add to it and make a larger tank I'm not sure or just a shawl a, a lacy shawl would probably be nice I, I just I can't imagine walking from outside coming in having a pink shawl on and then two minutes later everybody turns around and you're wearing a cream coloured shawl I think it's hilarious anyway that is Pinktober knit anything pink and again I, I haven't got rules up I feel like I want to say, well, and we're nearly, it's nearly too late. I should have just kept the rules with the same as Marlisha and Ta Talia. So I'm doing the Pinktober along with Marlisha and Talia from the Penhook Needles podcast. Thank you girls for joining me in this. And I apologize for not being in touch yet. Um, it's just one of those things I've got to keep trying to catch up with. Uh, knit anything pink majority of it pink and not purple but you know pink so just use your own discretion you should know if you want to ask me you can ask me but for the most part I'm not going to send the pink police around to you if you put it in as a, a finished object then it's going to go I mean there's got to be something in it that you think is pink so we'll leave it at that you can knit something small um, but if you're going to do more than one entry, I don't want everything as small as the little cupcake um, toy that Susan Claudino has out on the pattern or any little toy like that. I don't want any more than one of those. You can have more than one entry should the other project be a little bit bigger. Um, dishcloths, I'm not letting you out, no. You can enter a dishcloth, but I don't want 10 dishcloths from you. If you enter a dishcloth, the next project would have to be a bit bigger. Socks or shawls or, you know, baby sweaters or hats, mittens, thick cowls, that kind of thing. Um, I, have, I have not seen anybody posting tiny little things, you know, um, lots of them. So I appreciate that. I th can't think of anything else um, that I was going to say about it. So I'll leave it at that because I'm just, you know my mind's wandering all right moving on let's have a little bit of girly chatter and this week we're kind of in the kitchen let me just lean forward because I 
Oh, I'm trying. Oh, my goodness. Come on. Oh, where's the other ones gone? Oh, honestly. Sorry, guys. I have got... What did I do with the others? I'd have to go get them. Hold on a minute. I don't know what I've done with them. Um... So the last time we were chatting, I was telling you about a service online that will send you fresh produce and fresh ingredients um, to make meals. So they send you everything you need for three meals in that week and then you get to make the meals. One of the services, the first one I was trying was Green Chef. And I don't, I don't know where I've put the things because it comes with cards like this. But I had the meals, uh, got delivered last Thursday when I got back from... Florida so we tried those meals um, I won't go into detail about what they are because I don't have the cards but they were good they were yummy the one there was one salad big salad bowl um, I liked it it was okay but unfortunately like hubby didn't eat it and he didn't really fancy eating it and I couldn't eat it all and the next day it was starting to look a little bit wilted and brown some of the beets that you had grated so I didn't get to eat all of that so I felt that was a bit of a waste because I had to throw out half of that salad stuff um, the other things we made I loved and this next one this came yesterday and it's from Blue Apron and this is what was inside so this week they've sent me the ingredients to make um, a burger, a chicken dish, and a one pot shrimp dish. And I have picked this, th these, may, these ones come this week based on the fact that it's not um, a vegetarian, uh, it's, it'll include meat and seafood, you can opt to have no seafood. And if you, are, if you take different options, if you ask for paleo, if you ask for vegetarian, you'll get something different sent to you, obviously, and it's all on their website. And on the back of the cards, it will tell you step by step what to do. And they are, they're very tasty dishes, at least the ones I've just done. And they're super easy. I'd never think to make these dishes. And then if you have to go out and you buy the ingredients, it, it will cost a lot more because they send you exactly what you need. So... Really, you should have no waste. But I wasted the salad, as I said, because I couldn't eat it all. But, I mean, they'll just send you one, um, one potato, which I know you could buy separately in the store, but they'll even send you um, the spices you need with it so you don't have to go and buy what the different spices. And they are not cheap, especially in Colorado here. A lot of my spice jars will cost up to $4. Uh, that, to me, is pricey, just for a little pinch of something here and there. And then there was a fun fact card. Um, there was some fresh thyme in there. So it gives you some little, some information on it. It was really nice. So there's different kinds of thyme. I'm going to try one of these tonight. I think I'm going to do the burger. Now I know Hobby and Kiki will not have this. So I'm actually going to do the burgers for them. I'm probably going to eat this and I may have a veggie burger for me. So... I mean, this is just, um, it's got the ingredients down here. So it's just organic beef, which I've had before. So it's not like I'm missing out and not knowing what they're eating. But I don't think they're going to want this. They, I'm going to make it and he, he'll be probably give it a try. I don't think he'll put it on his burger because he's a, you know, cheese and pickle and ketchup and mustard kind of guy. But I will be having it and taste it. Um, he doesn't like seafood, but when I make this, I could always toss in some chicken for him. So that's still going to be good for us for dinner. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. I've, I did uh, mention, like, if you've used any other services, then let me know, because uh, I'm really interested. I, for three meals, this is for two people. The Green Chef, and this is where I think straight away I haven't used these, the Blue Apron yet, but... When the Green Chef sends you the menu, the ingredients, there did seem a lot more ingredients. Like, I could have easily had, made three meals out of it, even spread it out and served four people and added my own extra vegetables, should I have needed to, you know, if my family was a four. Um, 
these the the ingredients that came for this the i think it looks less and i think it's only going to serve the two without any leftovers but that is reflected if you ask me in the price because for three meals for two people uh, from green chef it was about 80 dollars and for this for three meals to be sent each week from this plan it's only about 56 dollars so I'll, I'll have to see and actually now that I've joined both the fun thing is you can always like tell them not to send anything next week and I can just alternate depends on who's got the nicer things on the menu if I fancy something from Blue Apron I'll just cancel um, you know the the green chef and to be honest I wouldn't mind trying another service that does that and then I have the op like three options but we'll see what I did do I got tempted with um, don't be barking please this kit and I'll, I'm going to check it out oh I signed up for the wine from Blue Apron and let me see if it's on here so that's what I was going to show you no actually oh where have I put the I know where I put the cards let me go get the cards because there were some unless I'd left them in here there were some really nice um oh where is it here it is I don't know if I've left the cards in. No, I know where I've put the cards, so bear with me again, guys. Ooh. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I will try to edit that out. So if there wasn't a long gap with an empty sofa, then I managed to do it okay. All right, I found where I put them. These are the ones from Green Chef. And let me see. Let's compare. This is a slightly thicker card. But this is how they look. Um, this is nice and colourful. Now, I w the, the one difference I've noticed so far, not that I think it's going to be a problem, but the nice thing about everything they send you is colour-coded. So everything I needed for this dish had little labels with what, uh, what it was, but in this colour. And everything I needed for this dish was in the blue and then orange. So it was easy. I have not noticed colours on these. They're not colour-coded. So I just have to read what the, you know, what's in the package. Um, but that's not, I mean, that's not a problem. I just think that was a really good thing. I just looked in the fridge, grabbed all of the, the things with the color. It was, seemed a little easier. Now, this one was my favorite last week. It was super, super tasty. And now, and yes, there's nothing to stop you. Now that you've got the recipe card, you can just do this again yourself. Um, you know, should you want to make it again, you could get your own groceries in it. You could get more of it if you were wanting to serve more people. Um, but super, super nice. This is the one I didn't, I liked it, but I couldn't eat it all. It's got quinoa in it. I'm not a huge fan of quinoa, I must admit. But I could eat it and there was a dressing like, um, did you call it miso? Oh, miso. I always say miso, miso and sesame dressing. Um, it was nice I just couldn't eat it all so I felt like it was, I was being a bit wasteful um, but that was good and then this one was another really yummy uh, meal really really like that and the flanks there oh I'd, I cooked that the way they said and it came out fabulous so tender um, hubby wasn't the mad keen on this he ate it all spice crusted sirloin with tabu tabula I say tabula and harissa chevre so it had bits of goat cheese sprinkled on it which I loved it just seemed like a very decadent meal to me now he did hubby did admit if there was a McDonald's burger sitting on the table he'd rather have it or he would eat it I'm lucky because having a McDonald's sitting there staring at me I do like them now and then but it was not as tempting because I really like trying new things as well so I was really enjoying that so now to the wine, because the Blue Apron, you can, and this is only once a month, but you can buy a box of wine. They are slightly smaller than an, a normal one, because it's just for two people. This is a 10 ounce, I think, instead of 17 or 15, I'm not sure. But I think they said it was a 10 ounce. It says 500 ml. You get six bottles. Three red, three white. No, Bindi, I cannot send you out there. It's pouring down. 
and you get cards. I love wine and I love trying new ones. This is just going to be ideal. Um, so what have I picked up, for instance? I've got Tierra Alta. And all, most of all of these wines I'm never, I'm not going to try before. So you get the card and it'll tell you about the wine. And then it will say, did you know? There's a did you know fact. It'll tell you the region that it's from. And there's a summary at the bottom. And then on the back, it'll tell you more information, what the flavours are, what kind of colouring it will be. I've got this one circled. Um, pairings, what you can pair it with. And then when you... Actually, is it on here? I guess it is. I thought it was on here for some reason. I thought it was on this large card, what to have, but I think it's on the wine card. Some of our favourite pairings for Tierra Duda. Um, I can't see... I'm could have sworn it was on this one, but never mind, I'll look into it more. I thought it told you on here what wine would go well, and it was usually it's what wine they've sent you that month. Because I didn't pick what wine I wanted. They're going to send wine depending on what menu I have been delivered. And I can't see where it said that now, so never mind. Okay. It does actually tell you the... Um, calories per meal on this as well which is really good don't know if the uh, the other one does that should probably yes 605 yeah fabulous I'm loving it it's the best oh it's one of the best things I've done for a while um and then here's some reds here's a Zinvendel and again same kind of things I haven't read all of the cards. I do love to find, I do like reading the backs of the wine, but I don't have to because it's here, to see um, what, what kind of flavours you're supposed to be um, tasting. I'm not a connoisseur, but I love, you know. If you ask me what does it taste like, half the time it's just, it's either peachy or it's, um, I don't know, or floral. And I love when you can read the descriptions of some, it's, when they tell you things like it's got a soil taste or chocolate and I'm like, really? But it's just <laughs> Grenache Blanc. This wine is full. Oh, it doesn't actually tell you on the back here. So that's good there. It says it on here. Um, flavors and aromas that you should get when you're smelling it and all that. Dried apricot, peach, candied lemon and honey. So I love having a smith, a smith, a smith. I was going to say a smell and sniff. There you go. I've made a new word, a smith. And then see if I can smell any of these things. So that was that. Um, I have a Chardonnay. I guess it's easier to, to go through the um, cards. So we have a Grenache Blanc, I would call that, first one. I had a Chardonnay. That's a white one. Dried yellow apple, bosque pear, cream, vanilla. I can't wait to try. Oh, I, I would love to open them all and see if I can taste or smell that. And the other white one is, looks like this one, a Sauvignon Blanc. I love Sauvignon Blanc. Now, this is strange. The aromas are lemon, herbs, doesn't say which ones, papaya and crushed stone. Crushed stone? How the heck do you know what crushed stone tastes like? Anyway, what I find um, interesting is every time I do a Sauvignon Blanc and I try a Sauvignon Blanc, they are always um, peachy, very some of them very, very heavily peachy flavoured um, taste. My husband doesn't like the smell of some of them because it's so peachy smell. Not He likes peaches, but just in a wine, it was very... The aroma is very floral and peachy. And I love it. But it's funny because they've not said anything about peaches on that one. But the other ones, I have a Pinot Noir. Oh, gosh, I've got a wasp in the house. Ugh. Can you believe that? You better go. Let me see if I can pause this a second. All right, I thought I could just hit the pause button again, but it turned, uh, turned off. But never mind. Um, I got it. Ugh. Kristen would freak out if there was that in the house when she comes home. 
So, um, apologies if I'm waffling on, but here we go. Pinot Noir, a Cabernet Sauvignon, and a, where's the other red one? A Zinfandel. Different flavours there, look. And look at the difference. We've got strawberries and rose pet. Oh my gosh. Pinot Noir. Berries, wild berries, rose petals, tea leaves and baking spices. I'm not a huge red wine fan, but I do like to have a taste of them all. Oh, I can manage one glass usually. Um, so, where this is berries and roses, this is like cherries and violets. And there you go, I told you sometimes they mentioned soil. Turned earth. It's going to have a flavouring or smell of turned earth. I think it's usually the taste. But I, I mean, I won't know if that's true because I've never e eaten turned earth. Okay. As I try them, if I remember, I will share with you what I think. In fact, if I wasn't, oh, I would, this is where I would love to do it. And I've often thought of doing this. I would love to have a little wine tasting with you guys. Um, but I record in the morning. If you were watching in the evening, then you could have a glass of what I'm having. But I don't want to have a glass of wine at 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. So on cert if I was to think about trying to do that for a little fun thing, I would have to make sure the lighting is okay and do the recording at, say, 4 or 5 o'clock, where I can have a taste with you, and then after dinner, you know, finish off the bottle with hubby. Uh, this bottle, not the big bottle. But, you know, I like a couple of glasses of wine on a weekend. That might be something to think about, having a little wine tasting together. Um, I will put my thoughts, I'll put some thought into that. And I think, let me think what else I was going to say. Oh, because one of the things I really keep wanting to get round to, and tell me if you've ever tried this, there, you can do this yourself, but there's um, a little game that you can buy, and it's a wine tasting mystery game. And... If you buy it, what it does is comes with like little velvet um, bags with numbers on, and you you put your wine in and you tie the you know tie the the neck, um, and you and your friends it will come with cards like scoring cards, and you and your friends have a wine tasting test. You could perhaps put the cheese you know put cheese on for you to to go along with certain ones, um, or chocolate that's really good you know chocolate's good to taste with certain red wines and you have a scoring card sorry i'm getting something in my eye you make notes about it and then you'll you know unveil which was which and see who well i don't i'm not expecting people to guess what the wine is but you could say you know give it a score and if that was a favorite or you can say what you thought you could taste and all that um i thought that's I've seen them and I keep wanting to do that with a bunch of girlfriends one night and I've also thought it would be fun if you you know that your, your friends bring the wine you bring one everybody brings a bottle so it's like a half a dozen of you would work you bring the wine and the one that does get the most points whoever brought that wine would get a gift and it might be another bottle of nice wine or it could be a basket of something I don't know it just sounds really fun Let's shut up about the wine now. We want to have a glass and it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's not happening. All right, last of all, let's move into my fitness section. And I thought I, had, I, thought I was going to say something else. I didn't mention that. I'll just mention quickly. I didn't mention book talk. And I did start reading this because I was on the plane. I wanted to read so I'm not quite halfway through but guys it's already getting that time of year where I wouldn't mind at all reading Christmas books I mean I'm reading this one or popping in a Christmas movie even seriously we're nearly into November I just cannot believe it but this is fun enjoying it so I'll tell you a bit more about that next week um so back to fitness um you might be able to tell Look, because, I, 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 you know, I kind of did my hair. I've got some new makeup on. I do, I will admit, 
Um, Kimberly wondered if I'd been wearing new makeup and prior to today I had not. I honestly think my skin was looking better because I was eating healthy, drinking a lot more water and I was, I've been drinking that shake as you know those that are not new to the podcast know I've been drinking um, Shakeology from Beachbody and again I'll say it I feel fabulous but I am wearing some new makeup uh, a little bit of foundation that I treated myself to for my birthday uh, it was in I went actually it was when I took the phone back on Monday I knew I wouldn't get out of there without actually spending more money and I got some nice foundation from one of the department stores uh, a little bit pricey but it should last about six seven months even longer because I don't wear makeup every day but I just wanted to put something on and have somebody tell me and Amelia sweetheart I wish you would live beside me because you could have told me all about what I should do um, but she you know she did it and uh, I'm starting to wear it now and then and I feel you know you got to look good to yourself to feel good as well so I put a little bit of makeup on but look I'm all dressed out in my workout gear because I work out every day and even just for half an hour I just it makes me feel fit and I'm buying you know little tops look at it, it's getting a little chilly I had this on when I took Kristen to school this morning and I just feel fabulous I really really do I want to say thank you to everyone that keeps encouraging me um, and I do appreciate if <laughs> if you don't like that I keep talking about this I do appreciate that you uh, just keep your mouth shut about it because I don't need negative comments I mean you have your right you have a right to but I always say if you can't see anything nice don't see anything at all because um, it does nothing to, to pull people down to those that do send encouraging messages to me thank you so much it does it means the world to me um, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining about my life. I've got a fabulous life. Always have had. I've been very blessed. Even when we had no money at home when we were kids, still had the love and, um, you know, the parents that looked after you and give you everything they could. I'm not complaining about any of that. But what I find, what I've found recently uh, is the older I get or the older I was getting, I stopped taking care of myself and I stopped caring about taking care of myself if you know what I mean um, because I don't work outside of the house I didn't have to get ready in the morning I don't have to put a bit of makeup on don't even have to wash my hair for days if I don't want to and it it does pull you down you pull yourself down because you look in the mirror and you go oh I'm getting old oh I don't look very good well of course you don't because you didn't take make an effort to do something about it so I'm finding that I'm, I'm starting to make another an effort to just look after myself. It's not all about making myself look pretty in the mirror. It's the inside and it's, it's what I'm putting into my body, as you guys know, that we've, we've been talking about healthy eating. Um, and I'm still going to go on. I will encourage you all the way. I know it's not a good time of year. I know you probably don't want to think about eating salads and vegetables or whatever. Uh, that's okay. I'm going to, and there's a, many of you are joining me, which I'm ecstatic about. I just, I love it. So I just want to mention, if you're watching this, we are going to start another new challenge on November 2nd. I'm going to do it for the 21 days, 21 days, um, because it does tie in with the 21 day fix program that I have loved and many of you are doing. But I'm also saying, I'm also letting you, I've let you know on Facebook and um, through messages that I'm actually going to start a three-day refresh because of all of the junk I was kind of eating. It wasn't a ton of it, but when you've been eating so good and then you add in a little bit of what you know you shouldn't have, like white bread, um, you know, just mainly things like that, more of uh, just bigger meals, you know, because you've got to keep your portions right. I just, I did, I felt a bit bleh when I came home from my trip. And it wasn't all eaten on my trip, because as I, that's what I was going to talk about. It was easier to eat healthy. It was the days prior to my trip I had got off plan. I had, I was eating, um, not doing my meals. Some days I'd miss my Shakeology, and boy, did I know it. But I'm going to do a three-day refresh, and then go straight into 18 days, 
with you guys uh, that want to of uh, drinking your Shea Ecology every day and trying to move. You don't necessarily have to have a workout program, but either go walking or do some kind of 30 minute activity. And those that are getting the 21 day fixed program, um, again, we'll start that the same day. We'll have the same private group. It's gonna be a new group. The girls that have already joined me, um, who are continuing on their journey, which I've just, I'm so excited about because they keep me motivated. Um, the group I originally started for that 21 days, that is going to be our accountability group. So every time you've finished a challenge with me, I'll put your names into that group and you'll join all the other girls that are go ongoing for support and motivation. Um, and, I, and of course, I'm in there all the time as well. So it's going to be fabulous. It just, it's keeping me so motivated. I can't thank you girls enough. So that's starting November 2nd. So if you want any information on it and you, despite the time of year, you want to start doing something, then get in touch with me. I'm here for you when you're ready. Um, with that said, getting back to being on plan when we were out at the, the parks, the Universal and Downtown Disney. Kimberly right now, and this was a big help, was going through, is going through, the whole 30 program. And if you don't know what that is, it's 30 days of eating real clean food and cutting out just about everything that you might think is affecting your health. Um, dairy, soy, sugar, obviously, and um, peanuts. Anything you might think would cause an allergy or a reaction or is making you feel sluggish, tired, you, you know, just not yourself. You cut everything out and you eat the basics, the lean proteins, vegetables, um, fruit, and not even a lot of fruit because, you know, you, you're still giving your body sugar that way. But, you know, small pieces of fruit. And then after 30 days, you reintroduce dairy and you, you try that and wait for three days. Nothing else. Keep on eating what you've eaten and reintroduce one thing. So say dairy or even just reintroduce milk, glass of milk. And then... If everything's okay after three or four days, reintroduce um, peanuts. Have some of those, you know, for the few days. And then you'll find out if you feel, ugh, or if you get a raging headache, then you will know it's more, probably chances are it's with the dairy or the peanuts or whatever it is you just ate because you've had 30 days of eating everything else with no effect. It's a great program. Um, so Kimberly was on that. She was on to about day 14, 15. She's been on it for two weeks. So when we went to the park, she wanted to buy a lot of stuff to take with her because it's, you know, when you're cutting out a lot, those people with allergies will know, or if you have certain types of diet you are on, um, you know, even vegan or vegetarian, anything, you know going out and eating at a restaurant is a little tricky sometimes. So Kimberly went shopping, and I did too, obviously, with her, and we took... Um, she did forget to pack her hard-boiled eggs, but she would have had eggs with her for protein. Um, we had fruit. We took nuts. Uh, she she can eat any any nut other than the peanuts, so she had some plain uh, raw cashew nuts. Um, and I'm trying to think what else we took. We had a cooler, and we had you know some. I think we took some juices, you know, just in case, because at least you know what's in that juice to drink. You know, no, obviously no soda. And walking around the park, I, I did take my backpack and Kimberly has a crossbody bag that she loves to put stuff in. I have to say, I was, we did not eat um, lunch times. We didn't go stand in line for a burger or a hot dog or anything like that. We didn't need to because we had snacks with us that were super healthy. And I felt much better walking around the park chomping on an apple as opposed to going and getting, you know, cotton candy or something like that so thank you Kimberly for keeping me accountable uh, I derailed a couple of times I did have to have an ice cream on my last day on Disney day um, it, to be honest it wasn't worth it but I just told myself oh, I'm on vacation I have to have an ice cream I realize now it's you don't have to and get this so proud of myself I went to see Harry Potter and I did not even try the butter beer. The whole, 
the the idea of going to Harry Potter a few weeks, months ago, one of the main things was like, oh, I've got to try the beer butter. I've got to get a drink of beer butter. And after having a meal that wasn't so great, I told Kimberly, I'm going to have this beer butter and I'm going to say, that wasn't worth it either. That that wasn't so great. Because honestly, what, it, what is it? It's just a sugary soda. Probably with some... I'm trying to close this box. Probably with some flavouring that gives it butter and certainly some other kind of weird things in it because it stays frothy. So whatever is in there makes this a, a frothy, frothy drink. I didn't have it. I didn't miss it. Um, I'm not that curious. They don't give samples, so you couldn't even just have a little taste. And that tells me that perhaps they don't give samples because it's not all that great. Chances are the people that bought one don't bother going back and buying another. I don't know. If you've tried butter beer, do tell me what it's like. Because I'm not going to try it. They're not going to fool me. I'm not going to buy sodas and stuff like that. I'm not say it ever, ever again. I just, I'm not doing it very often. I don't buy diet. I don't buy sodas in the house. I never drink it. So I was rather proud of myself. Kimberly was proud of me. And I'm super proud of her because she's still going on this whole 30 and doing great. Um, so it is always good. I was like, is that the end of it? No. What I was getting at is it, accountability and having friends do these things with you is priceless. It is priceless. Um, if Kimberly wasn't on that and she just was eating whatever she wanted, I would have gone through that park and I'd have had ice cream, I'd have drank the butter beer, I would have bought the, the chocolate frogs and all of those funny sweets that you know they do on the Harry Potter movies. I'd have bought a ton of junk and I would have eaten it. And I would have come home and I'd have felt, for want of a better word, but I didn't and I'm happy with that. And the same goes with me doing the programs and having my Shakeology every day. Those girls that are joining me, you keep me going and I hope in return I keep you going and the girls in the group we keep each other accountable motivated and we just uplift each other we praise each other it's just I cannot tell you how great a feeling it is to know I've got support like that priceless but anyway that is the end of my spiel on my fitness um these meals, now that I've done the 21 day fix, which really, really helped with the portion controls, I know now, I'm not counting calories, I'm not even portioning a lot of this stuff out, because I know what size I should have on my plate now. Um, so I'm doing well with that. The portions are staying in you know, small portions, and um, everything on here I would just allow myself to have because it's all clean, fresh food, organic, for the most part. I think, you know, 90% of everything they send is organic from local, you know, farms and things like that. So it's, it's great. I can eat those meals, and on the days I'm not eating those meals, I, I know what to eat. Still same, similar things, just maybe it's easier, just maybe some lean chicken grilled or some fish grilled vegetables and... It gets easier, guys. If this overwhelms you, if you think you can't do it, trust me, you can. And if you want to do it with me or have me help you do it, I can. And it gets easier. And it gets to be what I want this to be. A lifestyle. It's not a diet. This is my life. And if I do happen to go to Universal at another time and decide, that's it, I can't stand it, I've got to try the butter beer, I'll try it. Because I'm not having that kind of stuff, you know, for 80, 90% of my day or my life or my week. It's all good stuff. And a teeny tiny bit of not so good stuff is, to me, allowable in my lifestyle that I've chosen. Okay, that is the end of that. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to focus on what I've said I'm going to do. We'll see how I get with the Waldo sweater. We'll see what progress I get to make with this stall which I can't remember the name of but and um, one final thought because I've just got it on the stall there I want to thank my girl Dale who is girl Dale on Ravelry uh, when we met in Panera Bread 
I've only ever been to Panera once with my friend Michelle, and that was just last year, I think, when we went up to the Loopy U. I tried their um, yummy tomato soup, and I think I had a salad then. This time, I didn't... Oh, I did get a sandwich with it. I got a panini. I tried their autumn squash soup, which is their butter squash, butternut squash soup, which, as you may know, is one of my favourites. And I've made it each year. I love to make it this time of the year. And I have followed a Paula Dean recipe, but just not added a ton of cream at the end or butter. And um, I decided to look for a copycat recipe for the Panera soup. It's on the stove now. And the difference with this one, as opposed to Paula Deen's, is I roasted the squash. I didn't roast the onions because I just did this yesterday. I roasted the squash to get it ready. You, you do, apparently, according to the recipe, roast the onions as well. But then you just add chicken stock and you'll actually add to this one pumpkin. You know, the 100% the pure pumpkin. Uh, and then you add a couple of little spices, cumin and curry powder and cinnamon. I've done it exactly the way it says and I'm going to blitz that up in a minute because that is going to be my lunch and I will probably give a report on my Facebook page and um, a picture on Instagram so I'll let you know what I think about it. That is everything. Thank you for sitting down with me. I think I will try to do, it definitely will be every two weeks for now until I've got more stuff to show. And I hope that's okay with you guys. I hope you don't forget me in between the weeks just because I'm not posting every week or recording every week. Um, if I am organized enough, even if I've got nothing to show, I will sit down with you for half an hour and have a cuppa and a little chat with you. Um, I'm just not setting that in stone. For now, every two weeks, I'll sit and um, you know, give you a good waffle about stuff. Do get in touch with me if you want any help. Um, with your, your fitness or with your meal plan, meals and stuff like that. Uh, and you know, even if you just want help or you want advice uh, or some ideas, you don't have to come to me and say, I, I wanna buy your, the, the stuff that you're using. You don't have to buy anything. If you want some advice or any help, that's what I'm here for as well. With all of that said, I will wish you a fabulous week ahead. I hope it's, um, a cosy one if you've got some cold weather like here. I hope it's a fabulous one. And I hope you come back and join me next week here in the Knitting Den. Bye, guys.